And some disturbing video to show you tonight of a pit bull attack. Fine moments as a woman's beloved pit bull mauls her arm for nine minutes. Are not being filed, rather, against an Owatonna man who stabbed and killed his neighbor's pit bull. A pit bull is in full attack mode on a subway. Get the dog Get on, the Unfortunately, I had to end up taking that dog's life in order to save my dog's life. A family in mourning after a young child was mauled by pit bulls. Police were called to the Port Richmond home yesterday evening. Over here. Wow, man, those dogs are vicious, dude. Come on, come on. No, don't pet them, man. Those dogs are vicious, dude. Surveillance video shows Nancy Martell walking into her building when seemingly for no reason the dog named Chucky starts biting. We're just passing through. We're not even on. Yeah, but it's not, it's not, it's, it's the breed. It's the, they're aggressive dogs. We just don't want them on the property. And you can't even be filming it, honestly. I, you read stories, you hear things, and more times than not, something vicious has something to do with a pit. Bobo has just, he's just a loving and caring dog. He's very energetic, he's super energetic. The only really problem that I've ever had with him is just him being extremely attached to me to when I leave. There was one time when I was outside with Bo and he had to go to the bathroom. This man came around the corner and he was like, you know, do you have that, you know, do you have a grip on that leash? I feel like when when you come across those kind of things, you you feel a bit sense of I wouldn't say anger, but just towards a resentment that when you have these kind of dogs, everybody assumes they're just a nasty and dirty breed. Um, at first, I was standoffish just because I mean, what the internet says, you know, what like the real world says, they basically make it seem like you should be afraid of pit bulls. Bo is just like any other dog or puppy like just wants love and attention like we took Bo for a walk and you know he was very good with other people he didn't run at them he just he does his own thing like any other dog and after meeting Bo my perspective obviously changed I was able to see that pit bulls are not scary they just you know they're hyper they want attention they want cuddles they want just your attention in general and I was, you know, we were taking Snapchats of Bo, we were hanging out with him, and it was, it was good. It was a good dog. Pit bulls are a crossbreed between a bulldog and a terrier. Pit bulls aren't a specific breed, but make up four common breeds. American Pit Bull Terrier, American Staffordshire Terrier, American Bully, different from the Bulldog, and Staffordshire Bull Terrier. In the early 1800s, they participated in the sport bull baiting. Once that was prohibited, ratting started. These dogs had to be put in pits and kill the most rats, earning the pit in their name. Soon after, dog fighting became popular. Just before the Civil War, pit bulls came to America. They assisted both sides and made an impact, like Sally here. At the time, pit bulls were the nation's mascot during World War I and World War II. Look at the heavily decorated stubby. They became the true American dog. Pitbulls were loved and adored by their families and got along really well with children, which is where the nanny dog myth came from. Important people we know in history had pitties, like Helen Keller, Fred Astaire, Billie Holiday, Humphrey Bogart, and we can't forget about Petey from The Little Rascals. happened. I was a freshman in high school. Uh, I went to one of my friend's house and the second I walked in, he's got like this huge dog that's probably about as big as the dog from the movie The Sandlot. My friend pushed the dog out the way 
And as soon as he stepped out the way, the dog put like my entire knee in his mouth. So the dog like bit me and like held on and was like shaking and wasn't gonna let go until the, the guy's dad came downstairs and like had to pull the dog off of me. And the doctor told me that if I was like a skinnier kid, then I probably could have had like some sort of like nerve damage or something to wrong with my leg. The pit bulls are at like the top of the food chain and the dog that they kind of bit me was like way under there. So if that dog did that and could have like ripped my leg off, I probably shouldn't deal with pit bulls. Around when they first got the pit, um, he was, I'd say six to eight weeks, so he was a baby. And I came over quite often, so the dog knew me. I never really was real friendly with it or, you know, petting, but he would sit there and I was there, it was no big deal. And I went to pet him and I'm petting him like, oh, doggy, doggy. And he lunged at my face and my lip was split open with the blood. He had never tasted blood, so it sent him into like a rage. So he went to, to chase after me. I, I don't trust the pit as far as I could throw one. Dog fighting was officially illegal, and then the breed-specific legislation started, which bans and restricts aggressive breeds like pits in certain states. I think when you are born with an image of just straight bringing pain and terror, I think it's very mis misinformed because these dogs are very loving and very caring, and you are their life. I mean, pit bulls have this bad reputation, but yet when you see one, that is raised right, that is taken care of, basically like anything else that is very close to you that you know has life, he, he, he's gonna give that back in return. 1.2 million dogs are euthanized each year. 40% of that are pit bulls, making that about half a million pit bulls. They are the most likely to be euthanized, but the third most likely to be adopted. Over 50% of pit bulls need homes, compared to other large breeds, and in the end, only one in 600 pit bulls will find their forever home. The amount of pit bulls that end up in shelters is like ridiculous. I could probably pull up a bunch of emails on our email right now with just people looking for places for pities. I don't know if I could pinpoint one exact reason. We get so many surrenders. Typically, like, we're moving and we couldn't find somewhere that allow dogs or my younger dog doesn't like this dog or it's always something that you would literally be like are you serious that's why you want to return your dog like it's ridiculous it's usually not because the dog is aggressive it's usually not like oh i need to return her or him because they want to eat me all of a sudden or anything like that it's usually something relating to the owner but it's usually not the dog's fault In my experience, the most difficult dogs to work with or handle here are the small breeds, like Chihuahuas, um, Mini Poodles, little fluffy dogs like that. <laughs> I've, I've never been snapped at by a pit bull here or anything like that, but I've been bit and snapped at and growled at by little dogs like that. Any question you can ask me, I can say it depends on the dog, um, because it depends on their past and what they've been through and things like that, but I do believe a pit bull is a perfect family dog. When, when working with animals, it's like almost similar to like being a nurse. Um, you see things you don't want to see. You deal with things you don't want to deal with. There can be a lot of heartbreak, but also a lot of positive to it. We get to see all these happy endings of dogs finding their forever families, and we get to be a part of picking their forever families. Um, so it's very rewarding when you get a dog adopted and everything works out, and that's really because of you. Sometimes it really breaks you down, but there's always a reason to come back, and I think that's kind of the biggest thing. You always come back for the dogs, no matter what's going on. Uh, there was a group of five of us that came up with it three years ago, and this is our third one. We're all kind of intertwined with being fosters, adopters, and volunteers with Peace for Pits. 
Typically the average dog bringing into a rescue and foster home is about $400 to $600 per dog. They're very loyal, they're very protective of their little ones. Um, they're kind of like the nanny dog. They are very zoned in to pleasing us and making the eye contact and they're treat motivated. So training, they can be stubborn, but they're quick learners, loving, like to snuggle. They think they're lap dogs and they're way too big for laps. <laughs> I think it's great for the community to kind of recognize us. I know that some people steer away from it, but just having the public come out here, knowing that it's for a great cause, because the breed is so discriminated against, if there's a new station out here and showing all the positive sides, I think it would be a lot different. Not once have I ever been scared of him or worried that he was going to attack me because I knew that I raised him right. And I feel like if you do that with any type of animal, yeah, there's going to be that if, but if you know what you put in and you know how to raise a dog, then you'll get a dog that's loving and caring towards everything that he sees. What do you look good for, huh, baby? <laughs> I'm guessing you can have a treat? Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, Anne.